Pastor Julian here with Central's Devotion for today. I hope you're doing well. So I just uh, saw a short video, a former professor of mine, Derek Cooper, who does a lot of traveling, especially to biblical sites, is in Turkey right now visiting the seven churches of Revelation. He sent a video from Philadelphia, and he was talking about how I guess uh, odd it is uh, to be in these biblical places that are now uh, predominantly Islamic. And instead of hearing hymns or seeing Bible studies, priests walking around, uh, what you do, what you do experience is the call to prayer that's happening five times a day from the mosque. And so, uh, so I experienced that, but that's on the heels of my son Trace. Uh, just the other day, him and my, my other son Cayman uh, got into a, an hour, maybe two hour long conversation with a Muslim gentleman at Dorney Park. And I wasn't there at the time, but they, they came home and they talked to me about it and shared with me their experience. And I would love for them to know more uh, so that they could address that particular religion. And when, when talking about it, that they could speak from a place of more knowledge. Now, he has some knowledge about it, and he definitely has knowledge about our faith. But when, when having a conversation with someone of another faith and trying to be loving and gentle and also confident and, and maybe planting seeds, uh, seeds that will help move them towards the Christian faith, there's more to be done there. And so here, let me, let me help you a little bit, because I know that some, 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 some people, some people even in our church probably think, well, we're all worshiping the same God, uh, the, the, the God of Christianity, the God of Islam, the God of uh, Judaism. It's all the same God because they kind of believe in the Old Testament and they, they come out of the same place and so on and so forth. But let, me, let me just walk you down a little bit of a path here. So I, I like Dr. Pepper. I don't drink soda all the time, but I like Dr. Pepper. But I always find it amusing whenever I go to a, uh, a supermarket and I see all of the off-brand knockoffs of Dr. Pepper. And I have a list of some of those. I know uh, some of you might know, know some that are off the top of your head, but there's Dr. Sip, there's Dr. Skipper, Dr. Smooth, uh, there is Dr. Dynamite, Dr. Doctor, Dr. Dazzle, Dr. Buzz, Dr. Popper, and uh, Walmart's off-brand, which is known as Dr. Thunder. So you might get one of these and drink it and think, this is good, I like this, this is uh, Dr. Pepper that I'm drinking. I got you some Dr. Pepper. You might even tell your kids, like after you bought it, you want some Dr. Pepper, you go in the kitchen and get it, and they, they pick it up and it's maybe Dr. Thunder or, or Dr. Dr. Fizz. But um, uh, it's not Dr. Pepper. <laughs> It's Dr. Fizz. It's doc, Dr. Thunder. Uh, it, it's not the same. It's not the same. It might taste the same. It might look the same. But it's not the same thing. It might even have some of the same ingredients in it. But it's not the same. It's not Dr. Pepper. Uh, let's look at a little bit different. It, it, say a Rolex watch. Uh, you have to invest a lot of money, you know, ten thousand dollars, sometimes more, if you want a Rolex watch. I'm I'm going to buy a Rolex watch, and uh, you know, it's it's an it's it's a imitation Rolex watch. Are you going to pay full price for it? Are you going to invest completely in it? No, but uh, imagine paying full price for a fake Rolex watch. You, you you would be upset, you would be offended when you found out that wasn't real. 
And I'm going to tell you that the day is going to come for those who uh, do not, uh, those who are part of Islam, if they find out that they've invested all of this that they've invested into it and find out this isn't real. Jesus warned in, uh, in Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, against false prophets. And we, we read in other places in the New Testament warnings about false teachers. If you look at Islam, Jesus is a key part of that faith. They believe that Jesus is the Messiah, that he's a prophet, that he is the Messiah. They do not believe that he is the Son of God. And they do not believe that he died on the cross for your sins and that he rose again what they believe is that jesus as the messiah was here a while did miracles uh taught some really great stuff and then just god just kind of took him away and uh, then there's going to be a second coming that sounds familiar doesn't it in islam but there because we have there's going to be a second coming in christianity there's going to be a second coming and jesus is going to come back and, uh, and then uh, after he's back for a while, then he will die a regular mortal death and be buried around where Muhammad is buried. So <laughs> uh, the, there's a lot going on within the, the Islam faith that is similar. They believe in the Old Testament. Uh, However, they have their own version of it within the Quran and don't necessarily follow everything that's in the Old Testament or the Jewish Old Testament that we might be familiar with. What they, the, the big thing is that they do not believe, there's a lot of things going along with that. They, do, they believe that man was born inherently good and ready to worship God and inclined to worship God and live for God. And that you're, you don't, like, sin is just ba mistakes that happen that God is very forgiving of. That God in the Garden of Eden just forgave Adam and Eve of the sin that they committed. And so there is no need for Jesus to die on the cross. Uh, to be forgiven, because God just, you're forgiven, oh, oh, you want to, re you're repentant, you're forgiven. And the way to, to manifest their way to salvation is that they need to be obedient to God, follow the five pillars of Islam, and so they are very dedicated and regimented and loyal to uh, focusing on God, which is very admirable. Uh, a lot of Christians do not have that kind of discipline, and it is a very admirable discipline to be prayerful as often as, as uh, Muslims are, and so on and so forth. But it, <laughs> if you were to read the Quran, the Quran describes Allah uh, as the best deceiver. It describes Satan in there as a deceiver as well, but it describes Allah as the best deceiver, the best schemer. And so we, that is a, a very different image than the God that we worship in the Bible as Christians, especially when we see that there was no deceit in Jesus that God is holy, holy, holy. There is nothing evil or deceitful within him. And so here we have 600 years after Jesus is, uh, 600 years after Jesus is Muhammad putting together this faith with him as a prophet, using Jesus who is very well known throughout that region at the time and extremely attractive to people. Uh, the, the gospel of Jesus is extremely attractive, 
And because uh, it is becoming more the religion of the Roman Empire, Jesus is known farther out and the missionaries that have gone out. So Jesus is a very attractive thing to religions that are starting up. And so they, other religions, including Buddhism, have included an element of Jesus into it, Hinduism as well, because this is very attractive and welcoming to certain people. And so it gets others into it. And so here we have, 600 years after Jesus, a religion being started where uh, Jesus is acknowledged and encouraged to be believed in, but not what he did on the cross to atone for your sins, dying on the cross for your sins, and rising from the dead. Now, I want to take a look at Romans chapter 10, verse 9 with you. And this is a simple, uh, you know, if you ask, well, how do you get to heaven? How do you receive salvation? This is as simple as it gets in here without being super complex uh, as far as what you need to believe. This is what the Apostle Paul says. He says, because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, so you need to confess that Jesus is, is the ultimate authority, that he is above all, that he is the Lord. This is Lord with a capital L. So not that Jesus is just the Messiah or Jesus is a prophet. You need to confess with your mouth outwardly to the world that he is God, that he is Lord. And believe, have faith, trust in your heart that God is, raised him from the dead, and you will be saved. And in that believing in your heart that God raised him from the dead is, uh, the other part of that is that, that Jesus died, that he, that he died on the cross for your sins in your place as a substitute so that you might be forgiven and be good in the eyes of God. And the only way to be worthy of heaven and eternal life is to be pure and holy and washed and to have God, Jesus himself, impugn some of his righteousness upon you so that you can be in the presence of God and receive that eternal gift. And, it's, and, it's, uh, and it is a thing of Satan to deny that. It is a deceit to deny that. So I might sound a little impassioned as I'm saying this to you, but as scripture sits, if you are a follower of Islam, you are not going to heaven. And Christians should not be ashamed of that or apologetic of that, but compassionate about it, loving, wanting to, to, to see those who are followers of Islam to come to the truth and saving faith and knowledge of Jesus Christ and his sacrifice for them on the cross, in that we are to love God with all of our hearts and love our neighbors as ourselves and to love our enemies and pray for them. Friends, uh, this, is a <laughs> this is a fake Rolex to deceive and draw people away from Christ. And it is not the same God that we read about in scripture. If you have any questions, you feel free to talk to me about it or any of the other ministers. But I would love to see those seven churches uh, redeemed again and, and worship to Jesus and to our Lord as found in scripture going on in those seven churches that we read of in Revelation. God bless you. And have a great day.